Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going back to the book of Matthew. I believe it's chapter 26. However, this is now in Spanish. So we're going to switch that out real quick. Let's see, language, English. Alright, there we go. Alright, so last time we read about the parable of... Oh, we haven't. Oh, oh, okay, 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 sin, repent, okay. So this is the one we read. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I'll be back for a while to must be keep watch. Okay. Did we read chapter 24? Hmm. Okay, that, that makes sense. Because we haven't, I, I don't remember this one. But it sounds interesting. Okay, yes. Six days ago, we read chapter 24. I just checked. So, let's check this out. Alright. Chapter 25 of Matthew. We are so close to finishing this book. And I'm excited because I have never really read the book of Mark. If you go in the Bible, the New Testament starts out with Matthew. And, oh, I skipped it. Matthew, and then it's Mark. I know Luke, it's it's almost like my favorite because he uh, was a medical, I think he was a doctor? He was a medical uh, professional uh, back in the day, and uh, he is very detailed. Like, if you have heard the story about uh, the fish, uh, the, that Jesus uh, provided fish for uh, um, Peter, I think? I think it was Peter. I think it was Peter, yes. And, um, you know, he told him, like, um, he made a miracle, and, uh, he said, follow me, and, you know, Peter followed. They left everything, all the boats and the nets and everything, to, and went to follow him. But it doesn't explain what happened, what was the miracle, what, what was going on. And Luke, Luke does. He was, he is very detailed, he is very, um, invested, passionate about like giving you a visual but also giving you information so you can go back check and make sure that what he's saying is true like he he names a bunch of people people that were in charge back in the day people uh like different places different people that were um in authority and um you know so you can check fact check him so basically um uh, uh, I'm like, whoa, okay, that's that's cool. I don't, we don't know any of them because that was two thousand years ago, over two thousand years ago, and in a different part of the world, not in the U.S. So it's 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 admirable that uh, he'll put that much detail into his his book. So I'm really excited about Mark and Luke, and obviously John. John is the one I was uh, most used to, most um, familiar with in a way. Um, I don't know why. I thought it was John the Baptist, but it's, I think, it's someone else for sure. It's not John the Baptist. It's not a Jesus cousin. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting. But, um, then we have Acts, the book of Acts, which is, uh, after Jesus, uh, returned to heaven, after dying and resurrected, resurrecting, uh, Romans, Corinthians, all that good stuff. So, um, uh, yeah, if you're following my Minecraft world, Mostly if you know Spanish, <laughs> because I'm doing that Minecraft series in Spanish. Um, these will be the books that we are um, that will be on the third layer, probably on the outside or the front, probably in the front, uh, in the inside. And these are the book uh, books of the Old Testament. So yeah, if you're following the Jesus Storybook Bible series that I started. We just finished reading about uh, Genesis. I think there was like a Genesis story, which is the most famous. But anyways, let's go back to Matthew. Let's pray. Let's talk to God. I haven't done this in a while. Please forgive me, Lord. All right, let's close our eyes or however you want to do it. Kneeling down, standing, sitting, laying down, however you might be. But feel heart, feel God in your heart. Thank you, Lord. We're here today for another day. 
Thank you, Father, so much for this beautiful day. Thank you for every single person that is watching this video. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much for providing, for, for blessing me, Lord. Thank you so much for all you've done, Jesus. Thank you, brother. Thank you for this beautiful, beautiful month. It's, it's been such a blessing. Another month, another year, Lord. Thank you so much for all your blessings. Thank you for every day. Thank you because I'm still here. I'm still living, Lord. Thank you so much for what you've done and your your sacrifice. Thank you, Father, for sending your only son down to earth to, to live among us, to be um, human like us. Thank you, Lord. And because he was enough to, to save us, to pay our sin, to pay our debt in full and, and pay for our sins. Thank you, Father, so much for that. May the whole world know your name. May the whole world know Jesus. Give us the strength to to carry out this this task, this mission, this ministry and duty that you have given us. Jesus completed it. He fulfilled it. And I hope we do too. Help us, Lord, so we may be strong and, and share you, share the faith, and share the good news of the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Let's get started. Chapter 25 parable of the ten bridesmaids then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom five of them were foolish and five were wise the five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps but the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil when the bridegroom was delayed they all became drowsy and fell asleep at midnight, they were roused by the shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, Please give us some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, We don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, Believe me, I don't know you. So you too must keep watch, for you do not know the day or hour of my return. Parable of the Three Servants Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. He then left on his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earned five more. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used his money. The servant to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest, and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I have earned two more. The master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man. Harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy servant. If you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, Take the money from this servant and give it to the one with the ten bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Final Judgment 
But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence, and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink, or a stranger and show you hospitality, or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry, and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty, and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth, when you refused to help the least of these my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. Wow. That is amazing. I I haven't I I, I was semi familiar especially with um some of these like for example uh the ten bridemaids. Um basically they represent us. And you know there's people that are wise and um they're prepared and then they've done their things and they've grown and there's the other people that uh you know are also you know, waiting and, and going to meet uh, Jesus, the bridemaid. Sorry, the bride, bridegroom. Where is it? Oh yes, here it is. Then those already went into the feast. Okay, with the, oh, yeah, bridegroom. Okay, so yes, basically, um. You know, they, we, do, we don't know, and I, and I love this, I love this, how he actually told them and explained, Keep watch, for you do not know the day or hour of my return. This is Jesus talking, That that is what the red letters mean. And I just love when he, like, tells us at least a little bit about what, what he is talking about. Because these are stories that he told the people so they could have a better idea. But he's always, there's always like a, like a message, a lesson, um, something that he's trying to tell us, even today, that we have to be alert, we have to be prepared, um, you know, get to know him, know what he, what he wants us to do, and most importantly, stay alert, be ready, because he will return. We don't know when, we don't know where, uh, what time. But just to be prepared and uh, to do what he has told us to do while we wait. And then uh, this leads us back to the the parable or story of the three servants. So um, this man had a long trip. Uh, we can see this man as Jesus because Jesus uh, came down from heaven, was born human still being God he lived uh, he lived to be like 33 years old and then he was um, basically killed and he later resurrected three days later so a lot a lot of threes in the story especially uh, with the three people in God three person uh, three people in God uh, the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit so the the Trinity I believe it's called and basically, 
uh, you know, he went away. He went back to um, to heaven to prepare a place for uh, his his disciples, those that um, you know were the first disciples, and uh, that were with him during those three years of ministry that he did, teaching and, and sharing and you know saving people, uh, guiding them to God, and then. You know, he gave us responsibilities. You know, he has given us all these blessings, all this, this health, this, this, these things that we have, a home, money, uh, our personality, our, um, our voice, um, our spiritual gifts, our talent, our spiritual talent. You know, he has given us so much. All these bags of, of silver, basically. And he is he gives us according to our ability. According to, to how we can handle stuff. Even temptation. He will never allow too much temptation into your life. Enough for you to be like, uh, to overwhelm you, to make you fail. He will, he will... Make sure that it's just enough for you to resist and also will provide a way for you to escape that temptation. And I can assure you, if you are strong and firm in the word and in the power of God, anything is possible. Even as a human, God will provide, God will open doors, and you will see the many wonders that he has done. As that said, Jesus, it, it's been 2,000, 2000 years, guys. Oh, well, he was born back then, so almost 2,000 years? Because it's 2,022, and he died at 33, so the mass is weird. I don't know exactly. But, um, you know, there's a, there's a reason why it's this year, 2022. You know, after Jesus, the calendar restarted. His, his existence was so great, it changed time. It, it affected time. So, that's all I'm gonna say, I mean. For those people that are saying that Jesus never was a thing, never existed is a fake, is a legend, whatever, you know, there's evidence that he existed, that he lived, died, and resurrected, so, um, I'm just saying, all right, so, very important that, uh, we notice that he gave, uh, people, uh, responsibilities, based on their abilities, and left, and, um, he will return, and we, we decide what to do with these things. We decide whether to just accept salvation and, okay, I'm good. I'm going to go do my thing, my my own life, away from God, and, and, and I'm saved. And, you know, I got it all now. Or we can actually live in that faith. Help others. Serve God. Serve others. Um, spread the word. Evangelize. Um, represent God. Uh, share the faith, share Christ, share the good news, the gospel. Um, there are so many things we can do. And at the end, when the master returns, when Jesus comes back, when he, you know, is here again, we're all going to give account. Whether we invested and we doubled or tripled um, what he gave us, Especially spiritually, um, using our physic uh, physical riches to increase the spiritual richness, richness, especially for His kingdom and for His glory, we're gonna be rewarded for sure. I can assure you that, and I I hope and I really want that He tells me this. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful. And to be honest, uh, money is a small amount for for God. 
It's a it's a small account amount. It's it's something so tiny, so small. And it's human made. It's it's a paper, it's a piece of paper that society has give value to. So to God, money is super tiny, super little. But spiritual richness spiritual riches there's so much more than just money so much more than just stuff because all of that is temporary all of that will pass it will turn to ashes it will turn to dust it's temporary just like earth just like our this life so there are way more important things out there than human um money human um possessions stuff things so just just keep that in mind as we uh continue with this life that um we have at the moment all right then it says that um we give account this and that wicked and lazy so, um, very important words there. Um, I often feel lazy, and sometimes I feel like I can could be a little nice. Um, so, you know, I, I sometimes feel wicked, but um, in the bad way. <laughs> and um, But here we are. Uh, I'm not keeping to myself, just keeping salvation to myself. I am telling others, maybe not in person, maybe not um, every day. But here I am, I am reading the Bible, I am um, sharing it with others, explaining a little based on what little I know. And, um, you know, I, I'm working, I'm, I'm doing the little that I can. I'm probably going to be like that person that, uh, you know, was given two bags and two bags more. You know, I'll, I will invest and get two more, so in total four. But, you know, there's people out there that were giving five and they're earning five back and it it's amazing to see them in in work and in ministry and, and teaching and they speak so beautiful they they say the right things and I, I i am just nodding and agreeing because that's what i want to whenever they pray i'm like yes yes me too please they just talk so beautifully and, and they know what the word means they have so much knowledge, and they have God, and and I'll go with them and and tell them my worries, my concerns, and uh, I'm struggling with this, and, and they're like, well, you know, they give me advice. It's amazing. It's 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 a family. It's it's siblings, but way more better. <laughs> um, well, honestly, because we see each other every few days, we don't see each other every day. And, um, you know, we all have our own habits, but honestly, that would be amazing to to live with people that share my faith. That that would be amazing to, to learn and and especially to, to practice because I, I struggle a lot with praying. I don't do it enough. Uh, thanking God, praising him. You know, I reading the Bible. It's, it's mostly this, just a chapter here and there. And um, I will start to uh, go back uh, to the beginning of uh, Matthew and start writing notes, start writing um, notes and little uh, things about keeping a list about what Jesus uh, did in this chapter, what he talked about. Um, and if you do know Spanish, I suggest checking out the Nuevos Creyentes series that I have. I think right now I have like nine lessons on there. It's all in Spanish. I just you just stare at a black screen while I read the chapter, and um, it's it's really good for those that are new in Christ, uh, new believers, new to the faith, and uh, it just really explains a lot about salvation, uh, forgiveness, um, the enemy, prayer. The Bible studies that you might do pers on personally, um, baptism, the church, the responsibilities that the church has, uh, the testimony of your faith, of your life, the testimony of your word, 
you know, all those beautiful things. There's 13 lessons in total, and I already, I already read the book, and it's, it's beautiful. I learned so much, and lots of things make sense now, but, um, this, this is exactly that, you know, we are his butlers, we work for God, we are his servants, and he's giving us all these responsibilities to know what we're going to do, what what's going to happen, you know, Jesus is coming back, are you using your time wisely, are you using the time he has given you, the riches that he has provided, are you using that for, for serving him and others? It's, it's very important that we keep that in mind each and every day because, you know, we, we, we don't know when we're going. We don't know when we're leaving. We don't know when time's going to be over. So we, we have to use that time. We have to be out there. We have to be talking and, and sharing and learning. Always, always, always learning. Not just about uh, this world, but, also, but most importantly about God, about Christ, what he's done, what we need to do. And sharing it, it's so important to share. If if nobody, if my friend hadn't shared his faith with me, uh, the one that motivated me to go to church, especially a Christian one, I would have never, well, can't say that, because I don't know. It's all God's plan, but I would have taken a lot longer to know Christ and to know what he did was for us, for, for me and you, for you and me. And I wouldn't have accepted him when I did. It would have probably been years, in years, before I I met him. And I am so happy that things went like this. Because, yes, I, I became Christian because of a boy. Because he could only date Christian girls. So, yes, I did change for a boy. But God used that to make something so beautiful because uh, our friendship still stands. The boy I, that led me to Christ, to, to a Christian church, we're good. We're friends. We had a little, like a few little feelings in there for each other, but we're good. We're friends. It's okay. It's all right. And honestly, God has made me see that I'm not ready for love right now. I'm not ready to have a boyfriend or a husband. Not yet. Not right now. Maybe in a few years. Maybe five, ten years. I don't know. We'll see. He will decide. That's his problem. Uh, I'll, I'm ready for whatever he wants to provide me with. But honestly, I don't mind. Dying single. Whenever he wants me to go. Whenever my time is up. I'm good. I'm ready. He knows what he's doing. I trust God. But for now, the only one, the only man I need is Jesus. Honestly, um, he has proven the love that God has for us by dying on a cross for my sins. He died for me. He died for you. Okay? <laughs> he died for us. And lived. So he could continue loving us. And to show us that he has that power. And that if you believe in him and what he did. And repent. And ask for forgiveness. And accept him as Lord and Savior. He can do that for you. And he will. We will die, resurrect, and we will have eternal life. Not eternal punishment. Because we believed, we repented, we asked for forgiveness, and we accepted. We received that gift. And all that came with it. So, again, if you have any questions, any concerns that I might answer, let me know in the comments. If you can't reply to this video, go to another video, let me know, and... I will try my best. No one has commented. Nobody has asked questions. And that's fine. It's okay. I'm not the best person out there. Especially uh, to be talking about these things. And, uh, you know, offering, um, you know, like, let me know if you have any questions, you know. Um, so, I understand. I get it. It's alright. But, um, at least someone's watching. That one person that is always watching my Bible videos. 
thank you. Whoever you are, I don't know who you are. God does, and I, I hope that you get to know him, and you get to know Christ, his son. So with that said, um, another thing here. Those that are giving and use it well will be giving more. Those that do nothing, the little they have will be taken away. So, very important that we keep that in mind. We we have to use what God has given us, and um, don't 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 worry. He will provide. Even if you run out of money, run out of stuff, things that you need, God will provide. He has a plan, and we. We just need to trust. Alright, final judgment. This this I kind of knew about how we would be separated when the day does come. Um, so the Son of Man will return with angels and it will, it will be glorious. There will be no doubt that it's Him. All the nations will be gathered in His presence. And He will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats so a shepherd is the person that is in charge of a group of sheep he takes care of them he guides them make sure that they have food uh, guides them to like good grass and you know you can be a bad sherman shepherd sorry or you can be a good shepherd and jesus is the best shepherd god god is the best no doubt about it and he he will separate us, those that believed, those that didn't, and um, those that we, and as people that have already been saved, we have already accepted the gift of salvation, those that have received Christ as Lord and Savior, we already passed that first judgment, that separation of, of goats and sheep, basically, um, it's just an example, but, you know, he, he knows our hearts. He knows who has received them, who has not. And that's why it's so important to accept that gift of salvation with our heart. In our heart. Because if we don't mean it, it's not going to count. And that's a big problem. Because if it doesn't count, if you don't have Christ in your heart, received and accepted as Lord and Savior, then you... You're still out there in the darkness, lost. You haven't been found yet. So, very, very important that we, uh, we're careful there and that we know what's going on. And we know um, whether we mean it or not when we say that we accept Christ. So, very careful. Make sure that uh, we, we take a good look at the word and, um, you know, make that choice if we are or not um, ready to accept him. All right. So with that said, we have passed the first judgment as people and family and, and children of God. We have received Christ and we have passed the first judgment. As soon as we accept him as Lord and Savior, we have been saved. We are eternal life. That's the side we're on. However, there's a second judgment and that is based on our account. How, what did we do with our life, with our time, personality, money, gifts, uh, spiritual gifts, that spiritual talent that God gave us, or talents, there's more than one, whether it's uh, knowledge, encouraging, um, kids ministry, you know, um, evangelizing, uh, you know, all these things, all these different things that you could do, um, whether it's teaching or um, being a pastor or, you know, you know, there's a lot of stuff and I, I still don't know most of it. You know, we have lots of talents. We do. And we all have something, something that we, we have that God gave us and it's a talent. It's something we're really good at. However, sometimes when we go into the faith when we're like brand new and we are new to the to Christ to believing in him and being followers of God, of Christ um it's not always easy to figure out what talent that is and that's part of the tr the job of the church of the family that we have with God the local church being part of that 
they give us opportunities to discover our gift and develop it and let it grow. So very important that we go to church. <laughs> Not only do we get to be with God's family in God's house, but we also will get to learn more about God and Christ and what what their word says, what God's word uh, is trying to tell us. So very important that we go to church. All right, so you who are blessed with the Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. And basically, this is um, also um, what what he means: serving others, uh, giving them food, water, uh, whenever they're in need. You know, help them out, provide, care for them, visit them, try to love others like how you love yourself. And if you if you can't, if it's if you might struggle with self love, then try to love others as God has loved you. Show that kindness, show that love, that forgiveness, that mercy, that grace. It's it's beautiful. And I can't wait for for the day when I represent God. I represent Christ completely. Because it's a process. We're not perfect. And we're not going to be perfect. However, God helps us to improve and to grow. And I, I really hope to one day um, see, see someone that, that knew me and saw the difference. That saw God in me Christ in me that's that's gonna be beautiful the day it occurs so with that said uh, very important that way we avoid uh, you know not having that eternal life and instead dealing with the eternal fire that um, you know was prepared for the devil and in his demons so very important that we uh, help others uh, however way we can. Um, I actually saw this uh, a few days ago on Saturday. Um, we were we were out. We had just bought some tamales, which I haven't gotten any. <laughs> I just realized that uh, a few days ago we got tamales uh, during the night. And... Um, I haven't gotten any. I well, I mean, fair enough. I uh, well, well. Anyways, point is that uh, somebody was on the side of the road, and uh, they were asking if we had uh, money. They they were asking for money. They needed. Uh, I think they needed food or or something like that. They needed money to buy something, uh, obviously. And um, you know, we we didn't really have any money on us. But my mom, she she told him, we bought some tamales, would you like one? And he's like, well, oh, well, okay, yeah. And we gave him a tamal. I'm not angry. <laughs> what I mean is that we, we offered food. We didn't have money, and sometimes money is not even enough. With these prices, these, how much everything is and how expensive it's getting, you know, that tamal might have been more valuable than a dollar or five dollars that we could have given him you know it's it's food right there the tamales were still warm we had just bought them from uh, a guy uh, that we are kind of familiar with and you know they were right out of the little container where they had them so they were probably still warm and we gave him one and we we went on our way and that that was beautiful. I love when that happens, because um, you know there there might be people out there that are using money for other stuff instead of food. You know whether it's an addiction or uh, just spending it on different stuff, uh, not the best stuff needed for you know living, but instead for uh, you know desire and pleasure and things like that. You know, and it's not it's not our business in a way. Sure, yeah, they didn't mean it. They didn't mean it for food like they told you. Uh, but, you know, that's 
God's problem. That that is something they will have to give account to God. And God knows. God knows everything, even the things we do in secret. Which is why Jesus has told us to pray in secret because the Father who sees everything even in secret will know that you have been praying and instead of doing it in public in front of everyone and and oh look at me I'm praying oh my goodness my faith no we do it separately privately where we can focus and most importantly touch the presence of God where everything disappears and he is all we see all we know all we hear all everything that's beautiful and i've seen it at church where people where we are worshiping we are singing and people just have their eyes closed and they're singing and their hands are reaching out and and it's it's beautiful and i i have never done that <laughs> and i get jealous sometimes i'm like oh that must be beautiful you know what a beautiful feeling that person might be feeling right now just Feeling the presence of God and just being there. It must be wonderful. And I I I am just waiting. <laughs> I'm waiting for, for me to to do that. We actually have small group on Mondays and um it's online so we don't really have to turn on the camera but you know they, they allow us to like take things to the cross. Things that we want God um, to take care of, to, to control, and even some things to like get rid of, like our anger and our impatience and our fear and our doubt and our anxiety. And sometimes we keep struggling with it, so it's it's a process of, of taking it, taking it, taking it to the cross, give it, giving it to God, giving it to Him, all to Him, for Him to take care of and deal with and just keep it. Don't give it back to me. <laughs> like help me this 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 is yours now help me <laughs> and um you know just trusting god like father i i am de struggling with this help me here it is again uh, this another week here take it <laughs> so um just just trusting in him and and remembering that that he is capable of everything anything so very important that we trust him and um after taking things to the cross to the cross um we um well it's it's basically sometimes it's it means the death of whatever we take so instead of it being us it's Christ Christ takes over that not us because we we can't be trusted with certain things <laughs> so you know better let God and Christ take care of that they know best and uh, we trust him so that said after that we have the opportunity to uh, individually or like um, you know together uh, praise God and worship him and you don't know, call out uh, call out his name you know and, and just 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 say stuff well not, well not just say stuff but like feel say what we feel like that he is our strength he is our he is almighty he is our judge and king and father and his love is so great and and he is the one that provides he is our our strength he is our hope our light the way and you know they they're just filled with the holy spirit and it sounds so nice when they say it and and i'm like i want to be like that i i want to feel like that and and be able to express it and, and just have that that passion and you know these people they 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 call f god the father dad like some like the first time i was so confused i'm like you mean your real dad like your human dad what's going on <laughs> but no they were talking about dad the father god the father they were calling him dad in Spanish but still I was like wow that's that's like that's deep you know they have gone to that level of, of like he he's my dad he's he's my father he's he's my dad you know and actually talking with him and like dad help me with this help me with that and I'm like whoa this is this is new that's different 
and um it's it's beautiful and just hearing them and, and hearing their experiences it's it's beautiful it's it's lovely fabulous it's oh it's so glorious i cannot <laughs> it's it's wonderful it really is and i can just hear that in their voice that they are in love with him they are in love with god they're in love with christ and i want that i want that for my life i want to know christ and fall in love with him and and know him and i know that i won't be able to know him like he knows me or love him like he loves me but I I want to know him more. I want to love him more. And I can't wait to get baptized in like I don't know, 5 days. To uh Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Oh my god, 5 days. Oh, let's not say the OM word. Uh <laughs> because we are basically saying God's name in vain because it's you know, it's just a phrase. It doesn't mean that you're literally referring to God it's just a phrase so I'm trying not to say it anymore and every time I hear it in a video or in person I'm like don't say don't say anything <laughs> you know because it's true we don't need to say oh I'm you know and or oh my then the word because it's it's sure you're shocked you're you're surprised you know oh, wow you know but you don't need to say his name. You don't need it. You know, it's not necessary in a way, you know, for that situation in that way, in that phrase. The person that I heard in a video, five things you shouldn't say as a Christian anymore. Um, I knew how to explain it way better than me. But anyways, yeah, that's that's just something that I've been struggling with at the moment ever, ever since I saw that video. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. To each their own, but um, I, I don't like it anymore. I don't know what I hate more now. <laughs> that three word phrase or cuss words, uh, bad words. I don't know what's worst anymore. Um, so yeah, that's that's something that have, has been going on. And it's a very important, very important chapter indeed. About uh, mostly about Jesus' return. The people that are wise, that are that are not so wise, um, you know, being prepared. Being alert. And and don't get distracted. Don't let anything distract you from Jesus, from from God. Whether it's it's a moment, it's a it's a prayer, it's it's anything, you know, just if if you do get distracted, if if they do get your attention, it's okay. It's okay. God will forgive you, I'm sure. Especially if you ask for it. If you ask for, for to be forgiven, it's okay. But you need to go back. You know, finish what you started. Especially if you still have more to tell God, more more to say. Go for it. Go go back. Go back to that prayer. Go back to that um, you know, that talk that you had with him. Just just make sure that you're taking that time. Alright. Very important that we um good make good use of our time and resources. Of course, don't be lazy, don't be wicked. And, um, you know, use wisely what you have. Especially for the God that we serve. The God that uh, loves us so much and has blessed us. And remember, even if you're going through bad stuff, bad things, bad events, your life ain't good, your life ain't perfect, you're suffering, you're in pain, know that God still loves you. God is with you. He is everywhere. And it will only get better once we have Christ. Sure, not not it's not gonna be like rainbows and cupcakes, as they say. It's not gonna be easy to be a Christian. Especially once you have Christ, because the enemy is still trying to, you know, fight against what you have. He can't take away your salvation, he cannot take away Christ, but he will still cause trouble. Trying to make us doubt, trying to make us feel bad, ashamed, embarrassed, guilty, you know. He will use the things that we um, care about, like our family, our friends, our job, 
you know, people will talk. And not everybody is going to approve of you being who you are and who God wants you to be. But hey, they're the only judge is God. And he knows best and and we trust him. So let the people talk. But God is our judge. And um that day it's gonna be glorious when Jesus returns and everybody sees him. Everybody is brought to him and you know gives account after we are separated from righteous to um no those that are not um saved those that are not received Christ yet so be prepared and I I I, I hope I I am I am begging you go to God get to know him get to know Christ know and learn about what he has done for you what he has done for everyone but most importantly what he can still do for you very important please i beg you and with that said um let's pray just just to end this off ah uh, thank you lord for this beautiful day thank you for this beautiful tuesday today you have brought so many blessings to me you have kept uh me safe you have kept our, our kids safe. They are they all went home alive and breathing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much because I live in a beautiful country, uh, such a beautiful people, the diversity. Thank you, Lord, because I have the freedom of speech, the freedom of religion. Lord, thank you so much for that freedom. For those that don't have it, Lord, help them provide. Lord, please may they know that you are with them no matter where they are, no matter the faith that they are in, Lord whether that faith was forced on them or or they decided on it lord may they know you father may they know you may they know you jesus may they know you christ may they know what you've done for us and what you can still do lord please help us share your faith help us share you share our faith and just let the whole world know what we what we what we know about you, what you have done for us, Lord. Everything, everything, Father, everything. Every blessing, every every block, every every page in this beautiful story that we call our life, our testimony, Lord. Prepare us and, and prepare me, Lord, for, for what is coming. Um, help me, Lord, so, so those that doubt my faith will, will not uh, hurt me make me strong so i don't say anything bad or 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 do anything wrong that that hurts them or me father those that doubt our faith that doubt you lord give them wisdom lord we need you we need you so much father we need you lord we really do those people that are struggling with jobs with family that are sick lord help us help us so much may we know who you are may we know what we but we have failed to see throughout the years lord show us where you have been working lord show us show us what you can do for us lord provide father may we know that you are with us always and forever lord may we know christ well may we help others see christ and, and get to know him and and just help us lord help us because we need your help so much you know our hearts and you know what we all need what we each need lord I, I hope and pray that people will go to you and trust you and and look for you, Father. May may they remember, Lord, that a minute in your word, a minute praying, a minute talking to you, Father, is never a minute wasted, Lord. Thank you so much for all you've done for us and, and help us to, to continue to be like more like you, more like Christ. Thank you, Father, so much for for providing all these blessings. Thank you, Lord, so much for all you've done for your sacrifice of love help us so we can be better so we can serve you and others and may it all be for your glory and kingdom in jesus name amen all right guys and girls thank you so much for being here i, I really appreciate it here we are another hour video thank you so much uh it's amazing i've been talking all this time no water no no water breaks so that's amazing. If I have yawn, like, 
I don't know, three, four times. <laughs> so, um, it's it's not a dramatic, silent moment. It's, it's just me yawning here and there. So, um, thank you so much for being here. I hope you have an awesome day, awesome night, whatever time it is. And know that Jesus loves you. He has proven it. God loves you, and I love you too. Thank you so much for being here. And I, I hope you have a lovely day. That God bless you so much. And that um, you you get to know a little more about Jesus. And that you learn something from this. Because I certainly did. It's, it's amazing. Especially uh, to have those reminders. And, you know, be patient. Jesus is, is returning. So just hold on a little longer. Stay alert. And um, stay in the word. Be strong in the Lord. And in God. Well, they're the same. Because Jesus is God. So you know what I mean. <laughs> With that said... Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. God bless.